Um, in terms of open source, for 10 years at our little company, a requirement for our internship, um, it's, a, in our, it's a year-long paid internship. For 10 years, we've had a requirement, you have to launch your own brand and mm -hmm. bring your own product to market. And that's taken many forms. Um, in the case of some of the folks here, it's a record company that they develop. It's a label. Um, it's, a, it's an ad campaign featured in Adbusters. It's fill in the blank. Um, and I intuitively came to that, I guess, from my experience working uh, with Duffy, who's still the biggest hero I have in the field. Um, the I was. Did, barely, only by <laughs> a, a close second, only in terms of fashion. I think Joe wins out just because oh, okay. he's pretty well put together. You don't like the way I dress? Yeah, not like Joe's. Not like Joe's. Um, he, the, the reason why Joe has been successful more than anybody else in producing a just a, a now a an army of other small design companies who do great work is that he takes a long time trying to teach the improv act. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is an improv act, both running a company and trying to be an entrepreneur. Well, just remember, running a company means you're an entrepreneur. Yeah, yes, you know, yeah, yeah. What, what happens in this MFA design program is that, yeah, they have to come up with a product for their thesis, and they have to take that product to market. Uh, and they have to do all the things that are necessary, legal and marketing and surveying and all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but not all these products are going to go to market. No. But... Yeah they're going to have this background and this experience and many people will start their own business, have the product in their back pocket for some day when, you know, things let up or when the market becomes more f friendly towards their product, or maybe they'll never do anything with it. But just the fact that they've started a business is an entrepreneurial feat. Correct. I mean, and that goes across the board, regardless of the business, creating a product or bringing a product to market. I have, an interesting respect for because it's just so darn hard and teaching that improvisation act is that is that the core is that is that is that the best thing you can teach designers when it no. comes to product no you have to tell a story and you have okay. to have a story that's compelling not just for you but for other people you have to understand who your audience is there are lots of skills involved uh, and some people are more uh, under the radar, more mm -hmm. alternative than others. Some are mass market. Our biggest claim to fame in this program is the Target drug packaging mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. uh, created by Deborah Adler. Mm -hmm. and, and thank you, by the way. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> well, thank her for doing it because what she came up with before she started that project was something altogether different that had to do with curly hair. And again, it was her story. It was, here's somebody who has curly hair and she wanted a whole series of products that would make curly-haired people happier, which is fine, nice. But then she realized <laughs> that she wanted to do something a little bit more wide, widespread in terms of its effect on people, as well as more meaningful. Mm -hmm. And then the drug package came into her, uh, onto our radar screen, in part because her grandmother almost died taking the wrong medicine. Really? But that's what you have to do as an entrepreneur. You have, you just don't go out there, wait in the middle of the street and wait for an idea to smack you in the face. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes you get a nice smack in the face and you say, oh, I gotta come up with a way of avoiding smacks in the face. But the fact of the matter is you have to, delve deep into what you are familiar with and also what you're not familiar with and kind of draw something out of that that becomes an idea. And then the designer part is that you have all these skills to make it happen, to, mm -hmm. to put it on the table and make something concrete. Uh, there are many people out there who have these ideas and 20 years later when somebody else actually puts them into the marketplace, they said, I had that idea, mm -hmm. but they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, and that's lateral thinking, I suppose, maybe that's what designers bring to the table, or just the side view on projects. The Target project is something I would very much like to talk about, because obviously it's a hometown success story for us from Minneapolis, and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's an awesome story. What is the time frame from when that came onto your radar screen here at SEA to when it hit the market? Well, it was surprisingly quick. Really? We were all kind of shocked by how quick it I was expecting the, the opposite. No, a lot of the projects that come out of here, you know, take more time to gestate. And in fact, we believe that if the student can come away with their thesis as the first stage in a longer process, that's all we can hope for. Mm -hmm. Some of them go into the market right away, but that's a smaller percentage than those that kind of 
evolve into something else, and then there are those that don't evolve at all. But in Deborah Adler's case, she came to us one week with her curly hair idea, and we accepted it. She came in the next week and said, I've changed my thesis altogether. And we had problems with that because we felt that she was just engaging in a blue sky situation. How is she going to change drug packaging? Mm -hmm. You know, the drug companies couldn't care less. The FDA is so mired in its own bureaucracy. How is this going to happen? But it was such an important idea, and she was so committed to it, and that's part of it. You've got to be committed that we said, yeah, go ahead. Do right it. on. And she just did all the hard work within a three-month period. I mean, there wow. There wasn't there wasn't a lot of time to get a thesis out, but she hooked up with the right people, including Milton Glaser, who was a mm -hmm. great boon to her getting this in the, the target people's hands. Sure. And, um, because he's Milton Glaser. Well, because he also <laughs> knew the right people, and, and he was engaged in the project himself. Um, and, you know, he, and he was generous. And, and that's the other thing. Generosity breeds a lot of these products. You know, if people are generous, you meet others and you meet others and you network. And, you know, sometimes the word network gets overused, but you got to have a network, particularly in this age. So she went to work for Milton Glaser. During that time, she and Milton uh, pitched it to Target. Target just coincidentally wanted to do a rollout for their pharmacy. Mm -hmm. This fit beautifully into what they had strategically planned, and it happened. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a miracle. So whenever we talk about this as our you know, poster child for the program, we always have to put in the caveat, but you know, it doesn't happen every day, and it doesn't happen every decade, and it doesn't happen every century. So, yeah. you know, hard work and making those connections with the right people is what's necessary. Yeah, in an interesting full circle this week, you also interviewed um, the designer who did the store branding and the TV spots for all of the Target Pharmacy yeah, material. Yeah, those were great. And, yeah. You know, it was a and combined very... effort. Uh, the bottle itself would not have any currency if... Uh, the, the store wasn't behind it if the management and the executives weren't behind it and they didn't have good advertising, good promotion, good p PR. 